1868 and Spain has just had a revolution. They saw Queen Isabella II overthrown and replaced with no one for now. Instead, the Spanish looked abroad for a new monarch and the best candidate was a man called Leopold, the Prince of Hohenzollern. Hohenzollern is here, by the way. Leopold didn't really want the throne, but was coerced into formally considering the claim in 1870 by a certain Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of the North German Confederation, which was mostly just Prussia, whose king was William I of the House of Hohenzollern. There was one issue with Leopold accepting the Spanish throne. France under Emperor Napoleon III, who wasn't okay with a Hohenzollern controlling Spain. For France, being encircled by a friendly German-Spanish alliance was not something they wanted to deal with. Again, that is. And so Napoleon wouldn't tolerate Leopold pushing his claim. Napoleon sent his ambassador to meet the Prussian king at Bad Ems. William's summer retreat to demand that he would one, no longer back Leopold's claim, which William could accept, and two, he would never back any Hohenzollern claim to the Spanish throne ever again, which of course William could never do, and so he said no. Bismarck then leaked a slightly edited telegram of William's refusal, known as the Ems Telegram, to the press, which made it sound like the king had simply told the French to mind their own business. To the French, this insult was too much, and Napoleon decided to preempt public outrage and ordered the mobilisation of the French army. Soon after this, the French Parliament voted to declare war on the North German Confederation. The Franco-Prussian War had begun. For the southern independent German states, Bavaria, Württemberg and Baden, the way that William had appeared to have been treated by the French was too much. Along with the fact that the French declaration of war over an insult made it seem like there wasn't much stopping the French from invading if they felt like it. As such, curbing French aggression required the southern German states to ally with the North German Confederation. So France had a large, well-equipped army based around a corps of professionals. That's not to say the Prussians were necessarily at a disadvantage. Their army was of a similar size, was also well-equipped and contained many veterans. It was the general superior Prussian generalship like that of Helmut von Moltke which saw France on the back foot. That, combined with Prussia's greater use of railways to move troops and supplies to the front lines, meant that Prussia could bring its full force to bear much quicker. The German Allies won their first victory at the Battle of Wissenberg on August the 4th, which opened the way to further advances into France. Over the next month, the French would suffer a series of defeats until Emperor Napoleon met the Prussians at the Battle of Sedan. This battle did not go too well for the French, and Napoleon, along with over 100,000 men, were defeated and forced to surrender. Once news of his surrender reached the capital, there were riots and a revolution which saw the proclamation of a republic, because it was 19th century Paris and that was what Paris did then. After this, the French army basically disintegrated and the German allies then took the fortresses of Strasbourg and Metz and soon after laid siege to Paris. The people of Paris refused to allow the allies in and so dug in to resist. The siege was absolutely brutal on the population and starvation and disease took a tremendous toll. The new leader of the French Republic, Adolf Thiers, was tasked with negotiating a peace with the Prussians, who weren't the Prussians anymore since in January 1870 the German allies had proclaimed the new German Empire. A ceasefire was agreed in February, and after a small revolution in Paris had to be crushed, the Paris Commune, both nations signed the Treaty of Frankfurt in May of 1871. The treaty saw the Germans continue to occupy parts of France until a large war indemnity was paid. The French also agreed to recognise the new German Empire, and of course, Germany would annex the territory of Alsace-Lorraine, or should I say, Alsace-Lothringen. The Franco-Prussian War was now over, and it had absolutely colossal implications for history. It saw the unification of the German Empire, which fundamentally shifted the balance of power in Europe. The annexation of Alsace-Lorraine would dominate French politics for the next four decades and guarantee French hostility to Germany. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, and a special thanks to James Bizonette, Azarka Flash, Henry Rabin, Winston Kaywood, Adam Harvey and Sky Chappelle.